What does a professional builder look out for when he creates his own Whistler getaway? How about a place to look out from? This is our entry to the place. We walk up to the great room. And I mean, obviously, the reason we're here is, you know, the views. If you don't like snow under your feet, how about water crashing right under your floorboards? A couple of years ago, the level of the ocean came to within about one foot of the uh, floor of Country Cottage. That was cool. <laughs> one place that isn't cool, literally, is this summer getaway on Pelee Island. You know, in the summer, in most parts, it does feel like a tropical island. I'm Cal, and this is my retreat. Not a bad little shack. Cal Bragg built it himself, but that's really no big deal. He creates ski chalets and vacation homes in Whistler, BC, a resort town an hour and a half north of Vancouver. For 15 years, he made dreams come true for other people. Well, Cal finally got around to his own dream, kind of. There's a little bit of pressure from the wife, actually. Um, she was like, you know, we've put so much time and effort into everyone else's, everyone, everyone's place, and we just haven't quite done it for ourselves yet. So we had this opportunity, um, and I thought, why not? I mean, this is you know, the, the place to go and build for ourselves and live the lifestyle. Cal is an Australian who's fallen in love with the mountains, so he wanted a good look at them in his happy place. The cottage sports giant floor-to-ceiling windows. 600 square feet of glass shows off one of the best views on Earth. Most of the year, he lives with his wife, Morag, and their two children, smack dab in the center of Whistler. We live in the village, and this place is about a seven and a half, ten minute drive out of the center of the village. And the reason we built this is a bit of a retreat, selfishly for me, I suppose. We just wanted to get away from the mayhem of, the, of tourist season. I mean, in the middle of winter here, it's crazy. Cal and his family don't want to live in the middle of the craziness, but they don't want to miss out on the good stuff either. So their getaway is not really that far away. We're slightly out of town here. It's called Baxter Creek. It is a new suburb. We can see Whistler. We can see Blackcomb. Um, we can see the, the cable car, the peak to peak running in between there. You can see the weather coming up from the valley. It doesn't matter if it's a wet day, if it's snowy. It's just the views just go on forever. Once he found the perfect spot, building his own place should have been easy. After all, that's what he does. He's created dozens of beautiful retreats for other people. But with this project, Cal was creating a personal temple. I don't know why, but doing your own place regarding the details, is, is, it just gives you a bit more of a headache than if you're dealing with a client. It took a long time for us to get into the place and relax because it was always a work site for us. But now, I mean, it's, it's perfect because we spend a lot of time in the details. It's a characteristic house. It's very unique. Uh, we followed the shape of the land and that was our driver for the design. You know, the good thing about this land is we've actually had a, a bit of green space out the front. We've got privacy and yet the views are still kept and it's actually a nice safe area for the kids to play in there. You know, the Whistler grass is just some of the greenest I've ever seen, so they love it. When the outside of your dream house is this spectacular, a designer will do his best to match it on the inside. So this is our, the entry to the place, which we are concentrated a lot on as far as design is concerned. Uh, we walk up to the great room. In this room, we've got the kitchen, the two living areas, and the dining room. Um, you know, the ceilings, I think it's 12 and a half or 13 feet high ceilings. Um, and the reason that we've designed it that way is you have the kitchen in the middle. On one side, you have a living room, and another side, you have a living room. We split it into two, where you've got two different living areas, where predominantly one will live in in winter, which is around the fire, and then the other one is the open sort of area where we can sit around in, uh, in summertime and open up the balcony and, and really enjoy the view and the, and the afternoon sun, which I mean is directly faces south. Um, and my wife actually does yoga here. Um, and I mean, obviously, the reason we're here is, you know, the views. I can get the girls to meet here and we can do a yoga class. I'm, I'm very lucky that I've got a friend that's a yoga teacher, so we'll do a class together and we'll just get our friends together and do, you know, 45 minutes of yoga and then some wine and cheese and just, it's that little escape, I guess. Whistler's a place you can escape to in all four seasons. 
Cal wanted his retreat to be a fun place to hang out year round too. In winter time everything shut up and we kind of, you know, obviously the elements are sort of closed out. We have the fireplace. But what we do in summertime is open it up. We drop a screen on the outside, then we have twilight movies with the kids and uh, you know, we have a barbecue out there, people hang out on the deck, the kitchen's nice and close. It's, uh, it's a really nice spot to hang out in the evenings. So the great room is, well, great. Let's see if the bedrooms match up. We've put the bedrooms downstairs. The idea is that you wake up in the morning, you literally turn your head and you can just see the views that are out here. And the master bathroom has got this amazing bath, you know, and it's just relaxing and it's just that space where you can leave work behind. I often work from home, so being able to come here, there's no work associations for me. It's, it's just really that, that quiet, peaceful space. The idea is to keep a nice open feel. It is definitely touches of spa. Um, I mean, we used to live in Japan and we did a lot of onsens, which is like a natural Japanese spa kind of place. We tried to get that feel in here. And a lot of cedars in here as well. Um, these are locally sourced cedars. Um, you know, obviously the smell accentuates the atmosphere that's in here. Um, you know, the view from the tub is fantastic. We can actually look out and see Black Tusk and uh, the sun sort of setting over the other side there. I just don't think it gets any better than this. Maybe it doesn't get any better for the grown-ups, but what about the kids? Surely Cal cooked up something special for his two children. It's super low, um, you know, we've painted the, the, the wall in a, in a chalk uh, black, um, and the kids just come in and just go run right in there with the, to with the toys and chalk, so we're trying to encompass sort of everyone part of the family for the whole house. <laughs> this two-year-old dream house is a show-off Shangri-La. It shows off Whistler and Cal's mad skills as a builder. I'm proud of the house. I mean, that, uh, as far as the design and the effort that we've put in, we've gone through and, and come to a finalist in a couple of awards. Still, the most important judges are his wife and kids. This home is right in the middle of everything. Like We've got the, the mountains as a view, we've got a lake as a view, we're a stone's throw to the valley trail to be able to ride and access everything. So we're really, really amongst it. But you still feel removed enough that you can get that relaxed, weekend or week where you can just step away, which is lovely. We're a little bit spoiled because we have the opportunity to create a retreat, which is, you know, obviously it's not far from our home. Normally second homes are a little bit further away, but uh, the idea for us is that we can have the lifestyle within Whistler here. Um, you know, we don't need to leave Whistler. Uh, it's, it's basically got everything for us now, and the second home just gives us the opportunity to you know, get away from the village, get away from the normal hum humdrum of what our life is and, and just relax out here. Cal is a professional builder, so he knew what to expect when he made his mountain retreat. Hilton McAllister was just a farmer with a dream. So what was he doing working on the ocean floor at low tide? We are out here with our contractors and our builders digging the mud at two o'clock in the morning until six o'clock so we can get these things dug and framed before the tide comes in. I'm Hilton, and this is my retreat. Well, it's one of them anyway. Hilton McAllister has two retreats, right next to each other. One is called Dock House. It's big and new. The other is Plum Tree Cottage. It's old and tiny. Both are kind of like a mullet. At the front door, we've got the convenience of the community, and at the back door, we have this retreat. It's just an absolutely magnificent view. Yep, business in the front and party in the back. I suppose one of the most important features is that um, it extends right over the water. Hilton's twin retreats are in the tiny village of Cowichan Bay, just a 10 minute drive from the town of Duncan on Vancouver Island's east coast. Hilton was called here by the ocean. I live on a farm I've always lived close to the ocean my whole life, and when I moved to the farm, even though it's only five miles from the beach, I really miss the smell of salt air and the, this incredible vista. This provides an escape for me. It's just an amazing place. Amazing, yes, but tiny too. Less than five meters wide. It's also old. 
Plum Tree Cottage is approximately 100 years old. It was originally built, as far as I understand, at the turn of the last century, and it used to be a boathouse. Because it is old and it's got so much character, um, it, just, it just feels really, really comfortable. The ceilings inside are, are probably six foot three, so if you're any taller than six foot three, you have to duck your head to get under the beams. It is, it's the color, it's the ambiance, it's the, uh, the character of the cottage that is so appealing. These stilt homes are all built on provincial government leases, so you don't really own the land because there is no land for starts. So these leases are, are renewable every 30 years, and because there were only 13 lots, there will definitely not be any more because there's Hecate Park down at the west and there's the village of Cowichan Bay at the east. So when I bought this place, uh, there was only one lot that had not been built on it. That lot was right next door, and it had been built on. But what was built burned. That crisis became Hilton's opportunity to build a new stilt house. I'm not a designer or an architect. I went through the development process and the building permit process, which took two years. If you're doing any construction in Couch and Bay, you have to be very cognizant of the environmental issues. For example, when you put in the pilings, you have to dig them by hand. You cannot bring an excavator down to do that. You can't disturb the bottom during fish spawning season, and you can only work during low tide. We are out here with our contractors and our builders digging the mud at two o'clock in the morning till six o'clock so we can get these things dug and framed before the tide comes in. And then when the tide goes out, then you pour the concrete and then the tide comes in, it hardens. Then the tide goes out, then you put in the sauna tubes and then you pour the concrete pillars. After more than four years of sweat and bother, Hilton finally had an 18 foot cottage on a 25 foot lot. Dock house, that's what Hilton calls it, has won awards for its creative use of space and materials. The floor is actually reclaimed fur from a commercial building in Nanaimo. And once it was laid, it looks very much like ship deck. And we use a black silicone to fill in the gaps between the boards. So it, it's very, very impressive. You'll find that nautical look in the bedroom too. Hilton has a large porthole style window looking out over the bay. But living over the water is not always a good time. A couple of years ago, uh, there was a storm surge and there was uh, 20 knot winds and the level of the ocean came to within about one foot of the uh, floor of Plumtree Cottage. That was cool. <laughs> With cottages side by side, Hilton gets to rent out one and relax in the other. I absolutely adore this place. It's everything for me. It, it's, it's the sounds, it's the smell, it's the activity. Like there's always something going on here. It's perfect. Hilton had to build his retreat. Sandra Larange's dream home was just standing there waiting for her. The whole situation is crazy, if you think about it. I mean, who does that? Who just goes away for a day and comes home with an inn? Hi, I'm Sandra, and this is my retreat. Pelee Island is in the middle of Lake Erie, just five kilometers north of the American border. That makes the wandering pheasant the most southerly bed and breakfast in Canada. Sandra Larangia owns and operates the inn, but it's not just a business tour. It's a chance to live her dream and preserve a piece of history. This building was actually built in the 1800s. We're not sure exactly of the date, but it was on Stone Road, which is around the corner. Uh, then it was moved here onto East West Road, and they added on uh, an addition to it. At that point, it became lodging, and that would have been in and around 1895. Pelee Island feels a bit like the Caribbean. Visitors can enjoy long stretches of white sand beaches and, in the summer, some really warm weather. You want them to come over here and feel like they're on a tropical island. And in fact, you know, in the summer, in most parts, it does feel like a tropical island. We have exotic birds that fly in and, you know, all the colors and the sounds and everything else. But we're still in Canada. You know, how wonderful is that? 
Sandra came here as a visitor, but she decided to become a resident pretty quickly. I did come here on a Monday, on a day trip. Uh, by the Wednesday, I decided that I did want to buy something here. I was captured by the island, and by Saturday, I had the inn. The whole situation is crazy, if you think about it. I mean, who does that? Who, who just goes away for a day and comes home with an inn? Sandra had never run an inn before, but she knew what she had and how she wanted it to feel. The inn is unique because I actually have a B&B house. We hold eight bedrooms and they share six bathrooms. We have a common area, we have the reception area and we have the kitchen. We have a side deck that people can barbecue uh, if they want to so they can bring food. Um, so we try to create a grandmother's home, sort of grandma's inviting you over kind of atmosphere in the house um, so that you feel at home and you feel comfortable. Sandra's given each room a different vibe. They all have sort of a uniqueness. For instance, the music room in the house, Mozart is really featured in it. You know, the light switch is Mozart. And then if you look further, there's little bits and pieces of him in the room. There's also the Admiral room. It's completely decked out in all things nautical. You have to be in the room for at least a day or a night to notice all these things. And that's what I'm trying to create is just that little bit of conversation piece, I guess. Shortly after she bought it, she found out the inn has another conversation piece. The inn has a ghost. We've had incidences where uh, people have felt such a strong uh, ghost appearance that they actually talk to them. This is the southernmost inn in Canada, and it's had a lot of names. The Ohio Peely Club, Mill Point Lodge, the Gillis Lodge, and most recently, the Tin Goose Inn. When Sandra Laranja bought it a couple years ago, she changed the name too. Now, it's the Wandering Pheasant. The name actually represents the pheasants. So we have pheasant hunts every year. And when I found out that this is what they did was hunt pheasants, I was kind of mortified. <laughs> so I kind of represented the pheasant that got away. Sandra bought the place on a whim but she thinks there may be a spiritual connection. I discovered the inn itself sits on the same latitude as um, my little village in Italy that I was born in. So it was quite a connection, and I, I figured that that may be the connection uh, to the inn, and that's why I felt at home. There may be something else that feels at home here. Let's call it the friendly ghost. <laughs> We've had incidences where uh, people have felt such a strong uh, ghost appearance. We have had some Ghostbusters in here that um, also feel the, the energy, but I believe it is uh, a gentleman um, that owned the land here, him and his wife, and he had a, a tragic accident. He worked at the mill and was cut in half. Okay, uh, so I believe that he is here. He's very gentle. The entire island of Pili is gentle. There are no amusement parks or shopping malls here. One thing about this island, it's either you love it or you hate it. And the people that love it are the ones that know that, you know, you walk down the street and something magical always happens on Pili Island. So the island has magic and ghosts and lots and lots of wine. Pili is on the same latitude as the Mediterranean. Its climate is similar to Tuscany or Barcelona. They've been growing grapes and making wine here since 1866. The island is like a small town. Really, the mayor runs a bicycle rental shop. 
I think the biggest attraction to uh, Pelee Island is the tranquility, the quietness, the be being able to come here and get away from uh, all the hustle and bustle of uh, the mainland and it's a great place to come and relax and kick your feet up and not worry about anything. People aren't the only animals that come here to relax. Pelee Island is in the middle of a lake and a migration route, so a lot of birds take a break here on their big flights in the spring and fall. Sandra came here for a quick rest too, but the draw of the island was too powerful for her to leave. When I came to Pelee Island, um, as soon as I was on the ferry, I, it felt like the island was calling me. I felt a sense of peace, relaxation, which I hadn't felt almost ever. So I felt like the island wanted me to come. And besides, where else can you share a glass of wine with a ghost sitting in a room with an old fisherman or a great composer. There's um, a magical sense to this island that has definitely drawn me here. And the passion and the energy of the island and all the people on it has definitely kept me here.